is is this 430? Yes. Okay. Calling the commission meeting to order. Pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we have an agenda. Uh, we had minutes from the previous meetings that need to be approved. Is there a motion to approve those as written? Move to approve. Second? Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Uh, Chief, are you going to present the office with a quarter? Actually, Captain Colin Morris will be presenting. Thank you. Commissioners, mm -hmm. welcome back. <laughs> um, the Officer of the Court program is related to recognize officers who understand, embrace, support, and further the department's mission to make Fairfield safer. Character traits that have been identified by our supervisors as being important to successfully carry out our mission are as follows. Attitude, personality, initiative, fitness and appearance, and job proficiency. It is my honor and pleasure to announce that the month, for the month of July 15th through October 14th, 2020, Officer Christopher J. Rubis, a 23-year veteran of our police department, is awarded the Officer of the Quarter. And he's going to get this award by the Chief, and uh, he is away right now, so he was not able to uh, receive his award formally. So at some point, we're going to um, have a little meeting together, award it to him in front of his fellow officers. We'll take some photographs for social media, but I'll just take a moment to read this uh, to the Commission. On June 9, 2020, the lieutenants and sergeants of the patrol division met and after careful deliberation, unanimously nominated Officer Christopher J. Rubis as their choice for Officer of the Quarter for the duty period of 15 July 2020 to 14 October 2020. Among the many traits they identified was his calm, humble demeanor matched by a strong confidence along with his persistent work ethic, initiative, investigative skills, judgment, reliability, and professionalism. Officer Rubis sets an example for others to follow and has earned the confidence and trust of all of his supervisors. His hard work and dedication reflect great credit upon himself, our profession, and the Fairfield Police Department. As a result, he is most deserving of the Officer of the Quarter Award. Very good. Yeah. Very nice. Congratulations. Good job. Next item on the agenda are the traffic surveys. Yeah. All right. Traffic survey number one, Shelter Rock and Steiner Road intersection. There was no tri uh, survey trip. Nature of request based on field observations and the consistency of Steiner Road being a minor street at other intersections. Engineering recommends stop sign, recommends, I guess, a stop sign be placed on Steiner Road approaches to designate right of way. Uh, shelter Rock, high volume, less traffic counts show different. Uh, would have, would not have to stop as four way stop is not warranted at this time. That was sort of difficult to read. Yeah, that was Yeah. Is there, I guess we go to public comment? Yeah, yeah. I have a couple. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. I'm just wondering, these are two dead end streets, right? Shelter Rock and Steiner are dead end. So there's how much traffic is there? Well, Kevin lives there, so at the corner. Yeah. You're at the corner? Yeah, I, I can speak yeah. to that. Okay, because you come off Pier for Woods and then there's, yeah. there's no outlet, right? Yeah, I actually live on a corner of Steiner. And, well, the first thing is, if we can, all of the email traffic I've seen on this, uh, refers to it as Steiner Road. It's actually Steiner Street, so we might want to correct the record. It's Steiner Street and Shelter Rock Road. Mm -hmm. I'm literally the house on the corner of Shelter Rock and Steiner Street, um, a house that uh, Mr. Millington sold me over 20 years ago. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a really nice intersection. Both Shelter Rock and Steiner Street are, are dead ends. There is a pretty good amount of traffic. Um, I spoke to uh, Bill Hurley about this as well. He was out and he looked at it. So one of the signs would go on my uh, right away because I'm on the Steiner re I'm on the Steiner side of that corner as the streets come together. And um, 
It is. There are two dead ends, as you mentioned. There are two hills that come in. Shelter Rock coming down is a hill, and Steiner coming down is a hill. And I think that's what has created some of the angst amongst either the neighbors or whoever has gone to look at it to put it on the agenda. I'm not sure why it got on the agenda. It was before my time. But certainly the neighbors think it's a worthy idea. It's also one of those neighborhoods that has turned over again in the last 20 years. And it's full of kids and bikes for whatever that happens to matter as well. But it's, you know, it's just two streets coming together and there's lots of, like, this kind of stuff. So just can I follow up? Yeah. Um, so you live there 20 years. I do. So you're a good expert. So what do, you, what do you think about this? I think it's a good idea. I think years and years ago, I think there were stop signs on one approach or the other well before I got there. Um, one of my former neighbors, um, his name eludes me, he was, I think he was either on this commission or, or had members that were friends on this commission prior decades to that. And there were stop signs there. And I, I think it justifies it. Frankly, based on based on the hills, not not based on the sheer volume, or based on the fact that it's just a four way. I I, I think it's the eyesight in the hills. Jack, I've been over there, and I, I observed it uh, three times. And I I know your house obviously from years from, ago. From time, yes. <laughs> and I actually talked with your neighbor across the street, Mr. Gardner. I called. Oh, didn't get her name, but she had a young child. <clears throat> And I was parked right there by her house, so she was kind of giving me the evil eyes. <laughs> so I didn't let her know what was going on. <laughs> and her, her reaction was that the bulk of the traffic that comes down Shelter Rock turns right onto Steiner. And it's not a big deal. But the third time I was there, I, w I watched two vehicles come out of the dead end portion of Steiner. One was a Terminex truck, and the other was a car. Mm -hmm. Neither one of them slowed down. Yeah, there's a lot of that. Yeah. And now the line of sight is pretty decent. And whether they got a quick glance and knew no one was coming, who knows? Right. But, uh, initially, I was kind of opposed to the idea if I told the Captain Tracy. But the more I looked at it, it can't hurt. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, yes. I agree. Um, I think that the two hills really make it confusing. I did go up there and watch, and I agree with what Jack is saying. Do we have any more discussion about hearing from Captain Tersey? Um, history, the only thing, Commissioner, is actually Commissioner Kiley, you had proposed it in 2003 to put the dead end there. Yeah. We have nothing in the files on when the stop sign was placed there. Okay. Uh, and this was recommended by uh, Bill Hurley. He was the one that brought this forward. Mm -hmm. Correct. He's the one that through engineering does recommend the stop sign. Yeah. Public Thank comment. you. Is there public comment on it? Oh, sorry, Jack. Go ahead. I just had one other thought. You're absolutely right about the kids. Because while I was sitting there one day, there were about six or seven kids who came from the dead end of Shelter Rock on their bikes, single file, into the intersection, made a big circle. And then on back, and you know, so I there, and then when I went down to the yeah. the other end of Steiner to see what it's like coming out, there were a lot of little kids playing in the street. Yeah, that's, that's so a, it's a, it's a yeah. potentially dangerous setup. Yeah, that's that's our local that's our local biker gang. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any public comment? Jason, do you have any public comment in the queue? No, sir. There's one caller on with us, which is um, the caller for the other traffic survey. Thank you. Is there a motion to approve? Make a motion. No, second. Well, we want to approve? Joe? Yeah. Sorry. I approve. Okay, Peter, good. <clears throat> okay, well, the motion passes. What? Okay, traffic traffic survey number two, Roland Road. There was no uh, survey trip. Nature of requests remove the center lines to make Roland Road look like the quiet residential street with low traffic volumes that it is, like Edward Street that has no center line and not a major thoroughfare like re Reef Road. Removing center lines has been shown to reduce speed as a clear, uh, as 
It creates driver uncertainty and greater caution. By whom, Alyssa Israel? Public discussion. Any public discussion? I'd like to comment if I may. Uh, I lived on Lolly Boulevard for uh, 30 years and uh, very familiar with both Penfield and Rowland Road. And Rowland Road is a very heavily trafficked ro road. Uh, it's one of the main uh, corridors from uh, the Old Post Road uh, to to the beach to Beach Road. Uh, that along with Three Road and uh, and Penfield, um, and I just think, I don't, I would, can't compare this to Edward Street. I mean, it's it's a much <laughs> more heavily trafficked road, and I, I do think the uh, uh, the current condition with the center line does assist and help things out. It, it does allow people to try to you know, stay within those parameters of, of within the lines, and I think by removing that line, I think we're uh, uh, removing a safety. Uh, uh, a safety uh, uh, positive ask, asset, and I don't think it's a good idea. Commissioner Stone. I have several problems with this. Um, one is my understanding is that the lines went down like in 2007, 2000, yeah, 2007, and DPW believes that it was at least 25 years earlier than that. So why now you know, to remove that line? But more importantly, from a technical standpoint, we don't have a petition or anything in front of us. We have a, a, a request and we have a bunch of names, but not in a, a petition format. We don't have addresses. We don't have signatures. If you look at page eight of the, of the uh, traffic study, uh, there's a name on here that none of us have ever heard of before, Harvey Kravitz. We all know he does not live on Roland Road. Right. <laughs> and so I just think since the proper format wasn't followed, and um, I just make a motion to deny. Is there a discussion? Is there a discussion? Is there a public discussion? There's a motion on the floor to Mr. Chen. Oh, okay. We have one caller for uh, public comment. If the commission's ready. Is there a second on the committee to deny it? I'll move in. I'll move. I'll move second. Okay, so is there any other comment? Other than the motion is denied. No, no, we don't have a vote. Is there a discussion on the motion to deny? Yeah, is there a discussion? On the motion, motion to deny. deny. You also have public. Pup yeah. Um, well, no, if there's a motion made to deny it and it's been seconded and the, we vote for that, then it would be just denied. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. That's correct. Yeah. So, uh, you know, I, um, I would just say on the motion to deny, I think we should, since there is a caller, that we should maybe hold off on, on the vote and um, let the caller, whoever it is on the phone, at least speak um, to it, and then we can discuss it maybe a little further if other people have more opinions, and then, be, then we can just vote. I'd be willing to remove my uh, second okay. to allow public discussion. Okay. I think it's her. Okay. I'll withhold my motion until afterwards. Okay. Can we hear the public comment now? Or further discussion? Yeah. Okay, we have a caller. From two five six one seven seven nine, we're on muting. Good afternoon. This is Alyssa Israel, six seventy nine Roland Road. Uh, thank you for considering my request. I apologize for the petition. Uh, I had to put it up online uh, because of COVID. I couldn't go door to door, so uh, I posted it on next door and of uh, some people who may not live on Roland Road may have signed it. And I, I didn't go through all the names to see where they lived, so I, I did the best I could under the conditions. But um, I know that uh, several of my immediate neighbors uh, were in favor of this. Um, the idea actually came up a couple of, well, about a month ago. Um, I've lived on Roland Road for 23 years, and I never really second-guessed the uh, double yellow line. It's always been there, 
and um, and we were talking about it, and we're thinking, you know, why does Roland have this double yellow line? Um, most of the other roads in our neighborhood don't have them. Uh, Lally does not, and um, that's the other, obviously, you, you know all the streets, so I'm sorry. Um, of course, Edward is, is probably not as high traffic volume, but we don't know. Um, the traffic study that the Neighborhood Association did back in 2010 showed that the traffic volumes were much, much lower um, than all the other streets studied. Um, so it, it, it was lower traffic volumes than I had even thought myself. I didn't, you know, I, when I revisited the study, I'm like, hmm, wow, traffic volumes are quite low on Roland Road. Um, I, you know, the double yellow line doesn't, serve much of a purpose on our street. It, that, that line is signifies you're not supposed to pass. And no one passes on Roland Road because um, there's parking on both sides of the street and you actually have to, many times you have to go over and around the double yellow line just to get through because of the, the double-sided parking. Um, when you get to my block of Roland, which is the very last block, there's no parking on one side of the street. So it opens up the street, and that's probably what causes um, people to pick up speed on the last block. Um, uh, you know, I don't know what the speeds are on the uh, northern part of Roland because we didn't study that uh, part of the street, but I imagine it's slower up there because of the double-sided parking. So it occurred to us that... Uh, my neighbor and I, I don't think she's on the call, unfortunately, um, but she, she and her family are very supportive, as are other neighbors, of this uh, request. So, so the thinking was that the double yellow line actually gives a strong impression that Roland Road is a major th thoroughfare, and we don't think it is. The data from 2010 just doesn't show that Roland Road is a major thoroughfare. Um, I know one of the commissioners said it was, but the data just doesn't show that to me. Um, so, uh, so one easy thing to do is to try this, and I would like to just ask the commission to maybe give it a trial period. We can always paint the line at a later date. It is not. Um, it, it's, I, I would think it would be easy to do it any time. You can decide in six months or a year, you know, this was a bad idea, let's put the line back down. But I don't I, – I think it's worth a try. I really wish you would try it and study, you know, uh, put down the, uh, the, um, the speed uh, collection uh, monitor and let's compare it and see if there's any change. And, see if there's a perception of change by the neighbors. You know, hey, since the line has come up, have you noticed people have slowed down? Um, I'm just asking um, for the commission to give this a try. So rather than denying it, may I ask the commission to maybe, I don't know what you'd call it, um, approved under a, a certain time period and for review six months from now after we've removed the line and collected some data? and uh, perceptions from the neighborhood. So I guess I'll end with that question to please consider, uh, rather than just a full denial to, uh, you know, soften it a little bit, you know, let's give this a try under certain conditions. Thank you very much for listening. Commissioner Millington, good comment. Okay. Um, well, I would just say, you know, like, uh, you know, Lally was referenced, but you have uh, Beach Road, Reef Road, Roland, and Penfield that are all direct shots from either Old Post and Oldfield straight down to Fairfield Beach. And I, my in-laws live down on Fairfield Beach, so I always take Roland because it seems to be the easiest road to get down. <laughs> but the, um, I believe they all have double yellow lines. Don't, and Roland was just paved, so there, there's nothing there. Right. Right. Yeah. But they all had double, like Penfield has double yellow lines and stuff like that. So if we if we take, you know, eliminate it from Roland Road, then the residents from Penfield, I'm sure, will come. They'll want their lines gone and then Beach Road. The thing is, I often travel down that road, and I think, you know, the double yellow line in the center, there are cars parked on both sides of the road, and I don't think that increases speed. I think it actually slows people down because if there's a car coming in the opposing direction, you're traveling down, there's a car parked on the side of the road, 
you slow down to let that car going the other way go by before you do have to maneuver around the double yellow line to pass the car. So I don't think the line actually increases traffic. I think it keeps people on their side of the road. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously, uh, if there's a motor vehicle accident, it makes it a lot easier to determine who is on the correct side of the road when going around vehicles um, and stuff like that. So I, I, I don't see, uh, I know cosmetically people don't like to live on streets that have double yellow lines because it implies to people that may be potential buyers or something that it's a very busy street. But I think in this case it does keep people on the cor correct side of the road with cars parked on either side of the road. And you, uh, you know, any time you drive down there, you, have, you see it all the time. People are stopping to let the other car go because they, have, you know, um, they don't have a car on their side of the road and they have to cross the line. So I would not be in, in support of that. And I think it's opening up the whole box of worms for other people that live on similar streets to uh, make the request and then won't have any line. But it's just my two cents. Do we have any more public discussion? Yeah, I don't, I think, uh, I understand what Mrs. Ms. Israel is saying. However, uh, to take the yellow lines away and to see what happens seems uh, kind of reversal, like, you know, if we take yellow lines when we have an accident, does that make the town liable? I mean, maybe we should do more of a study before we take the, if we're going to do anything, do more of a study to see if we need to take the yellow lines away. But to take the yellow lines away and to see what happens, I think that we're, we're just asking for a liability situation. If something happens and they're going to say, wait, you had a double yellow line, took it away, and now we had an accident, now we're going to sue the town of Fairfield, you know. So that's just my, I'm, I'm against doing that right now. Jack? I just, just to add that uh, the town engineer has also indicated that the cost would be significant mm -hmm. to the town to remove the stripes and then go back and do it again. So I think that we can save a little bit of money for the town and put it in the police budget. <laughs> I, I would just say maybe we hear from the officers who have all the experience for all these years on their opinion on uh, how they, what their opinion is on the lines on those roads heading down there. So um, the background I did on it was a couple things. In the past three years, we've only had four accidents. Uh, three were vehicles struck that were parked and one was an actual accident where there was no injury. So it's very low, low accident injury. Motor vehicle violations issued um, eight over the past three years, uh, two infractions, four warnings, and two equipment violations. So we haven't had a lot of that. Um, down there, so the, the arteries or sub-arteries that are traveling north and south, Reef Road, obviously double yellow lined, Roland, double yellow lined, Lally, which does not go all the way up to Old Post, not, uh, no, no lines, Penfield, double yellow lines, and Beach, double yellow lines. So the request for Roland would just be one of the five that would, the others all have double yellow lines. Um, the MUTC standards are not a shall, but a should. Uh, they recommend that based on the volume of the roadway uh, and the width of it, there should be two yellow lines placed there. No. And based on your experience on, uh, you know, patrolling and knowing Roland Rose, do you think the double yellow lines actually increase people's speed, or do you think it? My opinion is no. Um, Ms. Israel provided a, a very nice um, study that was done in London where the double yellow line, removal of double yellow line, reduced speed, I forgot what it was, like 7%, I don't have the, the specifics there, but it's in the article. Uh, but I found one done just a couple years ago in New Canaan where uh, they actually found that was not the case, that the, uh, the reduction, of the removal of the yellow line was not, there was no data to support that. And they, uh, this particular one in New Canaan said that opened up other travel concerns uh, that they didn't get into here. Uh, and, and sir, if I might say, there's one other person, if you allow it, that wants to publish the comment. Okay. Uh, Peter? Yeah, cool. my, my, again, the comments that uh, are part of the report are replete with statements saying that it's a main road to get to the beach. We have a huge volume of walkers, runners, bicycles, and children in the area. And I can't help but think that 
the double yellow line would impede uh, people speeding down the street as opposed to um, removing it. I, I think it would, uh, it would increase uh, speed activity if the double yellow line was removed. There's a, somebody else, more, more public comment. Oh, there is somebody, you know. If you allow it, I'll have a throw right now. Sure. How? Hello? A caller from 858-9155 is on the line. Hi, thank you so please, much. Uh, can you please state your name and your address? Yes, it's Valerie Ratner, and I live at 672 Roland Road. And, um, I mean, I agree with taking off the lines, but mostly our motivation is to slow down the cars on our streets. So you're, you know, you're giving us a lot of evidence that perhaps that will not work, but what do we do about that then? Um, if that's not the solution to the problem, what is your solution to this problem? Because it is only a question of time the way these cars speed down the road. Um, there are walkers. There are kids, you know, on their bikes, on their skateboards. You know, they're having a grand old time. It's really scary to us on a daily basis. And I have reported speeding cars numerous times at the police at the police station. I go down there and I report them. What do we do? I would like to take that one. I can take a, take a stab at it. You know, enforcement is the proven method of reducing uh, speed. We have, we dedicate four officers in this agency um, who strictly enforce motor vehicle laws. Um, the, the problem is that, you know, Roland is not unique. You know, we have 250 miles of roadway in the town of Fairfield, and we are stretched very thin. But based on your comments tonight, um, we will dedicate our officers, as soon as we finish up with our plans for Reading Road, um, we'll move them down there. And the theory is we try to create uh, an atmosphere where people expect to see an officer conducting speed enforcement. And if there is that Sir. expectation, they'll slow down that, when not there. Okay. Um, it's Valerie again. I just want to say I'm glad that you brought that up. Over July 4th weekend, we didn't have fireworks, but that still drew a lot of people into our neighborhood down to the beach. And I can say because I had this conversation with my husband who noted that over the entire weekend, we never saw one patrol car here, not once. Well, we, we, have, we have an officer dedicated to um, the beach area. So I, I can't say for a fact that he was on Roland Road, but there is an officer responsible for all calls for service in the beach area. Fourth of July was a very taxing day for us. You yeah. Know, aside from the, yeah. the 250 calls for service, we had a really bad one. It took a, okay. a lot of our officers. It did not take the car that is dedicated to the beach area, though. That car remained intact. Any more discussion? Any more discussion? Okay. Is there a motion? Is there a motion on this? I will redo my motion to deny. Second. Well, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All against? Motion passes. Okay. Right. I guess there's a no old business, huh, Jamie? Mm -hmm. Let me get back to the agenda here. Yeah. Uh, there, uh, item number five is old business. There is no old business. Item number six. Uh, the numbers are a little off here. Uh, we had two items. Item three is new business. Uh, item 5A, increase beach permit parking fine from $80 to $200. Discussion. Discussion? <clears throat> I like it. <laughs> uh, background? Yeah. Oh, okay. 
we've been uh, we've been inundated with uh, complaints in the beach area. We've had to dedicate officers to do nothing but parking enforcement. Um, Last weekend, I believe, we issued 120 tickets down at the beach area, and <clears throat> the complaints that we're receiving and town halls receiving from residents are nonstop. And um, the emergency management team had a discussion about the fact that perhaps $80 is not a strong enough reason to prevent people from parking in the beach area. It's currently $50 to buy a ticket to get into the beach. Um, sometimes it's more convenient to take a chance and park in the residential neighborhoods. So at the suggestion of the first select woman um, and her team, the thought was to consider raising it to $200. And I believe there's other towns that just did that, right? I no, believe so. No. We're, we're not unique in this yeah. problem. Yeah. No, for day. We had to dedicate officers to Bob's store to try to prevent the parking at Bob's store and the walking to our beaches. And obviously, during the COVID-19 environment, people are a lot more sensitive to the amount of people that are visiting our beaches. Yes, I may make a comment that it's, we're being overrun by people down there. Mm -hmm. Most of the people are out of state. A lot from Westchester County. Um, parking everywhere, they're littering the beaches. They're totally overrunning the private property on those beaches. Um, I just think something has to be done, and this, to me, is a very good first step. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people, including the students, $80 is no big deal anymore. It's true. It's nothing. You know, so. Mr. Chairman? Yes. So Sunday, after seeing this, Sunday I went to, I started in Southport, went to Sasco, went down Beach Road, went over to um, Jennings, and you couldn't get in any of the parking lots. You, you could get into the marina, um, but what I noticed was there was a lot of out-of-state cars. And, you know, me, I pay taxes, Fairfield resident, I have a sticker, I couldn't get in. Um, and I'm sure, and I did get some calls on this, especially down on Beach Road. Um, I have a question, though. Is $200 enough? I mean, do we have a policy in towing? I mean, some of these people just don't really care. Do we have, like, could we put up a sign saying two hours after receiving tickets, your car will be towed? I'm just throwing it out there. It could be towed away. I don't know what the answer is. I know Milford did this, <clears throat> and it just came to a halt. Uh, tow zones are a, a possibility, and that's within your, your purview. Mm -hmm. You know, I would note that Fairfield Beach Road, uh, all the way to the, to the end of the peninsula, is no parking tow zone. Mm -hmm. Is that Chief, too strong, oh, or is the 200 good enough? I don't know. I'm throwing it out. Chief, I think the towing is, that never works. I've seen that we've tried to get cars towed off our street, and basically, it, it, they never get towed, the, the, the towing company never comes. Uh, I personally think that a strong ticket, 200, 300, 400, whatever it is, is as, as effective as trying to get it towed because nine times out of ten when the tow truck comes, the car's gone. Or sometimes the officers will try and find the person who owns the car so it doesn't have to be towed. I mean, I've seen this a hundred times. <coughs> Peter, I'm sure. Uh, if, in fact, we were to impose a $200 fine for parking, would it not make sense that if we had a sign, or signs put up, a $200 fine for illegal parking, to let them know that it's there, the $200 fine for illegal parking, and that might uh, deter people from, from parking. Say $200, and I'm going to go up to the park someplace else. The, the only, uh, I agree with you, um, there are so many signs down there that yeah. would be a, a significant expense to doing that. Okay. Our thought to begin with is word of mouth that somebody's, oh my God, I got a $200 ticket, um, a public media campaign um, that it was raised. You could always come back and add a tow mm -hmm. uh, feature. That would entail a lot more signs, mm -hmm. but uh, the, the two could happen at different points in time. So maybe the 200 is a good start. The other problem I had was they're not even parking in the right spots. They're parking wherever they want to park. And it's creating a situation. I was trying to just turn around to get 
away from Sasko, you know, because I couldn't get in. And it, it, they just parked forever. And if they were out of state, and I don't want label cars, but they were out of state cars, and there were so many of them. You know, our, our, our problem also is that we cannot limit who comes to our beach right, I know that. And, and on the sand, but we can address who parks right. at our beaches and, and roads. Mm -hmm. There was another question. I do a lot of bike riding. I go early in the morning, and up near Taymor, um, where Lake Mohegan is, and there is a lot of cars parked on Taymor, so they could just walk in? Yes, it, it, is, it transcends Tamor. It's, uh, it's Cascade Drive and all of the side streets in the Indian Village. And we keep, we keep adding more signs based on neighborhood mm -hmm. complaints. Um, and, you know, it just, we're just moving the problem around right. up there, yeah. so it continues. Canterbury Lane, Primrose. Yep, I was all in there. I can tell you, the <coughs> I don't want to label, but they're out-of-state cars, and they just get their pools, and they, you know, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I would just say, as far as like uh, t doing like big tow zones and yeah. stuff, there. I mean, it's very work intensive for the police department. They have to fill out a tow right. form. They have to wait for the tower. And if you're towing multiple cars <coughs> and then they have an accident that's blocking the roads, and the tow trucks are tied up bringing these right. cars back, mm -hmm. and the officers are tied up waiting with the tow sheet to give to the tower, that I mean, it could create a huge manpower. Nightmare. So then why don't we start with $200 ticket? I mean, yeah. how much, what does that create for the department? Well, we're a little bit concerned about the collection rates. Yes. We're not the best at being a collection agency. Right. Um, but it's a good start. The timing is perfect because we had actually just <coughs> ordered tickets two weeks ago and we put the order on hold. Mm -hmm. so we uh, and she, uh, from the standpoint of collection, I mean, it's one thing to issue a ticket, it's another one to collect money. And out, the out of staters, if you put a ticket on there, are they going to care? Are they, I mean, there's no effective way of enforcing that collection. Um, we, we, have a, we have a boot policy in the town of Fairfield that, that kicks in after $250 if the car is seen again okay. in the town of Fairfield. Um, we, we, we have in the past used a collection agency. We, we may consider that if we see a, a large number of outstanding. I, I, don't, I don't think we'll know until we try it. Bridgeport issues warrants for people for not doing that. Oh boy. Really? Well, yeah. So if you get a ticket in Bridgeport Bay, it will get hauled in and I have to pay like a $50 cash bond. So I was driving an I-95 and uh, they had a big sign up, Sherwood Island closed. It said, no walk-ins. So I'm thinking, you know, part of the problem is people park on the side streets and they're walking to the beach. I mean, it's not our purview. It's probably parks and rec, but maybe we can have a policy like at Lake Mohegan. You have to go through, you have to show somebody an ID to get into Lake Mohegan, the, you know, the swim area. I'm thinking if Parks and Rec could say, hey, you have to show you're a Fairfield resident to get into the beach, that might cut down on all these cars parking all over the place and they can't get into the beach, they walk in. We, we've actually researched that and there's, a, there's case law out of Greenwich yes. um, okay. yeah. that we can't yeah. prevent somebody from going on the sand below the high tide mark. That's considered What's the terminology? Public, uh, public trust. Public, public trust. trust. Yeah. Okay. I'm working on yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but how does Sherwood Island do that now? It's, it's a state, state park. It's a state park. They have a sign saying no walk ins right. right on the 95 highway and those big yellow signs. So how are they doing it? Outside the parking area, there's, it's all no parking. It's all off exit 18 on the connector, so you can't park there. So once the parking lot fills up, there's, I think they just write that because there's nowhere to park. Hmm. Ron, it's. Um, down where I am, the, there's a right-of-way, there's jetties, and there's federal lands on either side of the jetties going up 30 or 40 feet. So these people will park on the street any way they want and just go down there and plop themselves right in that particular area, and you can't do anything about it. And the, the Department of Environmental Protection, they have two offices for the entire uh, Greenwich to uh, New Haven, so to me, this ticket is probably one of the smartest and quickest ways to try and do something. Start. That's, that's my opinion.
A couple questions. Chief, can you please refresh us on what happens with the parking ticket money? Does it go to the town, to the state? I'm just not remembering it correctly. 100% to the town. There's a special revenue account um, and ultimately ends up in the general fund. So it does, okay. Yeah. All right. The, uh, the uh, collection agency thing uh, rings a bell. I know we've tried things like that over the past, and you know, the bigger the dollar amount is, the more attraction they're going to have to wanting to help you collect it. You know, typically they charge, I don't know, in, in the business world they charge around 20%. I don't know what they would charge you guys, mm -hmm. but 20% of 200 is much greater than 20% of 80 bucks. So that, that's good to know. They need volume. Yeah, they need exactly. volume and bigger dollars, you're right. Um, would this be 12 months or is this a seasonal type um, situation? This is seasonal from Memorial Day to Labor Day. That's what it is? Okay, so... It this year was a little different. We started it earlier. Right. Um, because of COVID, it was about a month earlier. So seasonal, yeah. consistent with that. And the last question I had is, you mentioned about the 250 revenue or uh, level to get to the boot. Can you talk a little bit more about that? Like, so if, if I owe $210, I don't get booted, but if I owe 310 and it shows up, I would get booted? Correct. That's okay. exactly the way it works. Okay. And that, that, that accumulates our, our tickets or my tickets, whether it's one ticket or ten tickets, right? Yeah. It, Correct. It adds up how much I owe? Yes. All right. It's traditionally done at the railroad stations more than anything else, but we're implementing a brand new parking system it's going to be based on LPR technology. Right. Okay. I, could, I could just speak to that because I was on the park commission and we, that's when we decided to do that. Um, it went from a fine to a violation. Once the police commission voted to make it a violation, then the police can enforce it. And Jack? Chief? <coughs> you mentioned that there's enough signs up and you couldn't really have signs indicating what the, the fine is for the parking. And yet we look at the handicap parking signs and they all say what the dollar figure is on the fine. That's part of the state. There's a state statute that dictates that you, you know, the width of the space and the sign and the height of the sign. And it also indicates that it has to indicate the fine amount. And I'm not saying you couldn't do it with the beach signs. It'd be very expensive to change them all out right now because there are hundreds of signs out there. there. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. I'm just thinking out loud, and I'm not looking to increase from 200 to whatever else. But is there any? Could there be any value to syncing this ticket up with the 250, so that one of these, the next time I came around, would get me not just to the second fine level, but might get me to that violation. That yeah. violation level. Is there any? Value to syncing those things up. I'm going to think cap them at 200. What a town municipality can charge. But we had this problem, I think, and we had to get rid of all of our parking tickets. Try to I, I have not seen anything. I know using an infraction for a municipal violation, there's some cap on it. Um, well, maybe but that's what we've ever seen. 748 has that cap. Has that cap. I, I don't know about parking. Okay. The, the, if you use a 250, though, would you, you would tell on the first ticket? Well, no, because we have to notice. We, you, so you have to there's a specific happens. rule. Once you right. go over the 250, we have to send a certified letter right. to the person. And so every time you issue that first ticket, it would automatically kick in. You'd kick in a letter, and it would, it would throw them on the boot list if they didn't pay after a certain number of days. Got it. All right. Thank you. Any further discussion? We have a motion. I'll make a motion to increase it to 200. I'll oh, second. Okay. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 Against? The motion passes. Okay. Item number 60 is the donations. They are to all to the animal control uh, division. Um, if people would like, they can read them. Otherwise, <laughs> we could make a motion to accept them. So no moved. Yeah. Have you Okay, anybody against? We accept this. Aye. 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 Okay, good. There's a lot of them here, boy. Um, okay, so item number seven is the monthly report. Right. Now, Chief, did you want to add these before the monthly report? Uh, whichever you want. Yeah, let's do that. Um, do I have a motion to add to the agenda a discussion regarding a need for an August meeting? 
we, we, I guess we want to talk about whether or not we should have an August meeting based on what's happening in the, in the world today, or what the thinking? Um, sure, it was, it was raised by a member of the commission. Um, we, had, we had not put an August meeting on the agenda because we traditionally never meet in August, but we are, we are very willing to meet if you're, if you're willing to. I know this has kind of put us behind not meeting for a couple of months, but we also want to be respectful of vacation times if you're planning on trips to Florida or anything. <laughs> <laughs> right. it, was, it was my suggestion to the chief that we take a look at an August meeting because we're, we're in a position where we're down a captain, so we need to get that promotion done, then we need to backfill the vacancies that occur. We're down, my understanding, several patrol officers. Rumor has it there's a lieutenant who's going to retire this month, which creates another line of promotions going back. And with the time that we're in, the circumstances socially, we can't afford to have an apartment that's short, short change in personnel or in their organization. So that was the, the motivation to suggest we at least talk about it. And that doesn't even include us doing any traffic studies or any other business that would come up. I agree with that. I think we have to be present in the moment and support the town and the police force. And if having a meeting in August will do that, which I think it would, personally, I think we should do it. I agree. Mm -hmm. We have a motion? I, I agree as long as there's business to conduct, right? Yeah, if, yeah. if, if we saw no agenda, but uh, I don't I'm think sure that's going to happen. I'm sure yeah. be. I mean, I think we should probably, if we meet, it should be for the purpose of an, uh, staffing and not, you know, to load up an agenda with people that want parking We believe, we believe the, well, the sec by the second week of August, we will have we will have lists that will need to be promulgated um, mm -hmm. in the, because we are currently running tests at every level of the agency right now. Mm -hmm. That makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. so, so would, it, would it maybe make sense to meet later in the month because the second Wednesday of the month may not get you to that point in time? I didn't make the notation to the chief that it didn't have to be the second Wednesday. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't matter to us. We believe our last test right now is scheduled for July 29th, oh, meaning that we'll have the results within three days oh, of that day. Is there any way we could just call it a special meeting in order to address, to keep the agenda, to just dealing with, because um, if you're talking about all these promotions and new hires and stuff, those are long meetings. You know, so uh, I mean, I think at this point, traffic surveys could probably wait till September. So, like a special meeting just for personnel matters? Well, like we normally do when we, yep. yeah. sure. You know, um, yeah, we can do that. We're we're in the process of uh, we're going to have to put another special meeting together because I I will have some lateral transfer candidates that you'll need to interview. Mm -hmm. um, that will probably come up in in August, and that would probably be a special meeting in and of itself. Um, but we could call, we could call the, the second Wednesday a special meeting for the purpose of promulgating lists. Unless there was some critical traffic survey that yeah. came yeah, up. I, I don't see that happening. I think that would be better just because of, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. The, the, as far as I'm concerned, the staffing is the issue. Yeah. Yeah. So let's channel that uh, meeting for staffing purposes. Yeah. We'll just, okay. You want to make a motion, Jamie? Is you good at uh, yeah, so we'll make a motion to have a special meeting to address uh, promotional lists. Or, uh, and staffing lists. Yeah, uh, promotional lists and staffing to be held on uh, Wednesday, August 12th at, uh, here at headquarters at 430. It's 430. And that will need to be a public meeting and that you have to, in public session, vote on a promulgation list. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. I'll make that motion. Okay. okay. All, okay. okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? Motion passes. And we have another
an issue that we want to add to the agenda, um, possible dates for convening of a trial board. Uh, we should have a discussion about that and then a, a vote on that. Could, Chris, could you give us a little more input? In? Sure. Can you just vote to add that to the agenda? Oh. And I need a three-fourths uh, vote. Okay. okay. Make a motion we add to the agenda. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 It passes. Perfect. So by charter and by the rules and regulations of the Fairfield Police Department, um, we are required to convene a trial board in any case that could result in discipline greater than three-day suspension. Three-day suspension is the only thing that the chief of police is allowed to do. We have such a case. Um, I started the day with four potential dates to do this trial board. Um, and I'm down to two dates right now, so I'm hoping it, it works for the commission. I'm, I'm still not at liberty uh, to explain the nuts and bolts of the case because you will be the jury in this case. I have asked, um, we have an attorney assigned to this case, and you will have your own attorney assigned to you for guidance. I've asked the attorney if you can have advanced copies of the case itself in personnel files, and I haven't gotten the answer yet. I will be emailing you the answer to that question this, the second that I get it. So I'm down to two dates for this uh, board hearing. Um, the 21st of July, which is a Tuesday, and the 28th of July, uh, which is a, third, a Tuesday also. If those dates don't work for you, I can push this back to August, but these are the dates that your attorney and our attorney was available right now. Well, I'm going to be away a week, so. Which one? Uh, I'm leaving like the 24th, and I'll be back like August 2nd. So why don't we do the 21st? The 21st. 21st works, right? Yeah, 21st. Good. Okay. Was it announced at 432? I leave it up to you. We can do it any time you want. 4.30 works for me. Yeah. All right. I'll make a motion then to uh, have the, what's it, what's it called? Uh, a trial board hearing. A trial board hearing on Tuesday, July 21st here at police headquarters at four, starting at 4.30. Second. Put that All in favor? Aye. 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 All against? Motion passes. Outside chance, I may change the venue depending on how many people I have to bring into this room. So I might seek a bigger room, but I'll, sure. I'll keep you posted. Okay, now we have a monthly report to discuss. Being pretty straightforward. Uh, you can tell that you know uh, our call volume certainly went down. Our, our motor vehicle enforcement went down. We have transitioned back to uh, to somewhat full enforcement. Um, our calls for service are leveling off. It was obviously a very busy weekend, and uh, in the beginning of the report, there were some very good uh, very good arrests by some of our officers in some pretty high profile cases. Chief, question on the traffic safety unit in May. 167 stops, zero infractions issues, and in June, June 113 stops and one infraction. Why are we stopping people if they're not getting infractions? Um, correct. You know, it, it it was a combination of two things. It was a combination of um, of COVID-19 and our guidance to limit your motor vehicle activity to serious offenses. Coupled with that, the protests and the, the general sentiment, um, we don't and never have forced our officers or given them quotas, but there was a real reluctance to engage in motor vehicle stops when we were being criticized nationally for conducting motor vehicle stops. Um, we've gotten through that. It, it took a little while, and it took some messaging from the command staff, and it took uh, it, it, it took uh, some heartfelt conversations. But 
we had, we had a rough couple months there, and it's reflected in our statistics, no doubt about it. I understand you had a couple months. Couple months. No so, question. So how do you how do you gauge the mood of, of the town of Fairfield as far as you know? Are we pretty copacetic? Is, is there a lot of agitation? What, you know what's going on? Right we're now? okay. You know, we, you know, our officers spent some time up on the highway during the protest, and and were subjected to some of the most ugly and vile things that any of them had ever heard in their entire lives. We don't get that here. You yeah. know, we had some pretty large protests. I believe there's some pictures in the monthly report. Everyone was very respectful during our protests. Um, you know, like like I explained, Bob and I sit on a Wednesday night panel discussion. Um, there is a uh, a new commission being developed that will probably play a part in in terms of uh, racial disparity and and moving forward. Um, we welcome that. You know, we've we've always participated in those things. Um, we are actively trying to recruit uh, people of color for, for hiring. Um, that's our great challenge right now. We want to give you a very diverse group of people to take a look at when we were able to hire brand new hires. Um, but I think Fairfield's, Fairfield's not a Minneapolis. No. And, and we, we've never felt that way um, at all. This is a a very kind and, and, and welcoming community, and our booking desk is still filled with bagels in the morning <laughs> coming from people. That's nice. um, we're okay. How do you? How does the state impact the policing in Fairfield? Do they? Do they have guidelines they want to try and enforce through you here in this town? Yeah, there, there's a there. There's a, a, a House bill that, that just came out a few days ago, and it contains about 45 action items. Um, with the exception of one, I don't think we have a problem. Oh, good. There, there are things we already do. Um, you know, they, they came out with guidance saying, you shall not put quotas on your officers for tickets. We haven't done that in 50 <laughs> years. Um, yeah. Qualified immunity, that, that's a little touchy subject right now. And, and not necessarily from our perspective, but as taxpayers, you should be concerned about that item. Um, you know, because for the most part, we're indemnified, and we get sued a lot. We get sued all the time, and a lot of them are completely ridiculous. And without qualified immunity, um, we'll be dragged through a court system, and the town will be paying for legal staff. That those bills will mount up. So I'm hoping the legislator take a, a real hard look at qualified immunity. Not that it's even really in their purview. It's a Supreme Court decision that established qualified immunity. So I don't know how that's all going to play out. Chief, a lot of talk on the TV these days about, well, cops are quitting left and right. Uh, I would never want my kid to be a cop, so forth. That sort of attitude, what's happening to our list of recruits? Are we getting ample number of people applying, or are you noticing a much lower list? Uh, probably just a little bit too early to tell. I'm deeply concerned about that, though. You know, what, you know, traditionally, we get 500 candidates for one opening on the entry level. I don't know. I really don't know, because that is the, the language right now is, you know, I don't want you know my kid to be a cop, and I I don't know what's going to be out there for candidates. The fact that um, our academies are basically shut down, this is a great time to look at laterals. Stanford is laying off 30 cops. They're fully educated and ready to go, and I am very much want to steal some of them. And there's two African Americans um, that are ready to come to Fairfield. And there, there's a couple other agencies that are um, have qualified people willing to come to Fairfield. So great time to do <coughs> lateral transfers. Okay. Got to look to, to new hires relatively soon also. And that would save us a lot of money too. Mm -hmm. A lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money. And we, we don't have a good training mechanism right now. I mean, they are doing a virtual academy, but I have my suspicions on the quality of a virtual academy. Um, are people leaving the 
Fairfield Police Department because of everything going on, I don't believe that's the case at all. The people that have left, and you're right, Lieutenant Ed Green has announced his retirement at the end of the month, and he will be sorely missed here. But he hit his 31 years. He found another job opportunity. He's leaving for all the right reasons. Officer Moran retired last week, and he's going to go see the world. And, again, he was 30-plus years on the job. You mentioned Stanford, 30 police officers being let go. Is that a budgetary issue? You could call it a budgetary issue. You could call it a defunding issue. And are we facing the same issue down the road? I'm not hearing that in any great deal. Yeah, we're bumping heads with the Board of Finance a little bit. I haven't watched it last night, but I heard we came up quite a bit last night. I'll be watching it late tonight. I don't know. Nobody's reached out to me directly and said we want to defund you. Okay. Ron? Okay, so the RTM meeting where you explained the use of force, you mentioned the body cams and the 360 cameras. What's the timeline for those? So I hope Jason's still listening because he's spearheading this project. But the Gantt chart right now shows that we will be fully operational by July 31st. Body cams have been a pretty easy deployment. Car cams, it's about four-hour installation per car. So far, very well received. Kudos to former Chief McNamara for taking part in the grant process way back when where we don't have to pay a penny for this stuff. It was all fully granted by the state. But we should be, by the end of the month, fully operational. I got one follow-up question. So the SRO is at the schools now. There's a FERPA act, which, you know, video cameras are not considered school records. So are the SROs going to have body cams or not? You know, I started that discussion with Mike Cummings way back when and never really got a definitive answer. We'll follow the school board's lead on it. My intention right now is these officers will be issued body cams. If the schools want to put special rules into place, we'll cooperate with them fully. Well, there was a court case which said those security cameras, not the body cameras, are considered school records and they're under privacy. The FERPA, I think, is Federal Education Records Privacy Act. So you might be, you know, there might be a violation of law if they have the cams on. But I guess you could check into that. I will check into that. It's probably in the release of the video. But I'll look into that law. We are concerned about, you know, when we can release and when we can't, how many FOI requests we're going to have. We'll have to cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. Two follow-ups, please. One, the most recent one is on school safety. Because of the changes in school that we're going to have in the fall and we don't know what they all are yet, are you guys lined up with the administration on what changes your safety security team is going to have to make to sync up with them? And I don't know what they are and you may not know. I'm just thinking out loud if there's any big initiatives that we need to fund or think about. Yeah, there was the very first school reopening. They've assembled a team. We're on that team. And the first meeting was today. And the next meeting is Friday, which I'll be attending that one. Lieutenant Wyatt attended the meeting today. I haven't had a chance to talk to him yet. But, yeah, there's a lot of challenges. How that affects us is probably not a great deal, but they're looking at facilities and, you know, how they're going to maintain social distancing and what's that all about. Spread out. Spread out. A lot of challenges. And we'll play a part in it. We are the social distancing police. Well, certainly you guys have done a great job since we put that in place a few years back. And, you know, we certainly have my support and anything you need for that. It's a great program and great work that you guys do. It's been very successful. It really has been. And secondly, a follow-up to Jack's earliest comment about the May and June traffic stops. And I know they're low and I know why they're low. But what is the normal percentage of, like, if 100 cars get pulled over, do 10% get tickets or is it higher? Is there, like, a norm? Is it 1 out of 5, 1 out of 10? It's certainly not 1 out of 100, right? 
Probably not one out of a hundred. Um, <coughs> but twenty percent maybe. Is it like like one out of five? Kind of feels about right. Yeah, twenty percent feels on average. We could definitely pull statistics of that nature. Yeah, I was just curious. I could probably also add that position uh, within the department has some uh, significance on how many. So if you might, if you're in the traffic unit, you probably have like a 99 percent infraction issuance rate because that's your job. Your job is to take problem areas and enforce those problem right, areas, right. as opposed to maybe a patrolman that works evenings. He might be looking for other things and not necessarily the speed, or he may be looking for problem areas within the town. So he's stopping cars for, for different yeah, reasons. Yeah. Um, so so that could also impact the, the, the uh, yeah, numbers. The percentage, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So there any further discussion or questions? Thank you, sir. We get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. 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 Okay. All right. Aye. 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 Aye.